Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Advocata's seventh discussion, AdverChats. My name is Nakia Shiraz. I'm Vimanga. I'll be your co-host for this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as, as you might be our followers or you might be new to our program, but AdverChats has been designed uh, to discuss current economic conversations and, 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 and bring them to you uh, in the most uh, simple manner possible. Uh, so, so thank you for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, today, we have a very special guest uh, and you might be aware, you might be not, but today we're trying to decode, uh, you know, issues surrounding uh, the confectionery industry. Uh, I believe there's been a lot of public discourse uh, on, on what has been happening. Uh, we've read in the newspapers about certain difficulties. So today's Advert Chats will try to, you know, really uh, look at the industry, dig deeper and understand the issues that this very important industry or uh, Sri Lanka's economy is currently facing. Nikia? Thank you, Manga. Uh, and just to add on to what you said, joining us today to talk about these first-hand accounts of the industry and its challenges, we have Mr. Dilum Belana. He is currently the Chief Financial Officer uh, at Melbourne Biscuits uh, Manufacturers. Welcome uh, to the Advertat session, sir. Uh, thank you so much for giving us the time today. Thank you. Thank you, Vimanga. Thank you, Nakia, for inviting me for this session. And I'm happy to have a very interactive session with you, your team. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you so much, sir. We're very excited. Um, before we begin, and while we have our audience members joining in to today's evening, sir, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself and about your career? Yes. Uh, I'm basically, I'm a chartered accountant by provision. I hold a fellowship from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka. And uh, particularly, I'm from, I had my article training at KPMG Sri Lanka and then move on to HEMAS. To my first engagement was as an accountant at HEMAS uh, transportation sector with the travel and the transportation experience, I managed to move on to another group of companies called Enka. I was heading finance and uh, like youth of Sri Lanka, you as a youngster, bachelor, you always aspire to experience the world and globally. And then I moved to uh, Maldives to get a bit of prospects in terms of, uh, of my career and on the remunerations. I took up a position in a company called Mall Air Taxi, which is the largest seaplane company in the globally. Uh, I mean, being the geographically, being island concept in the Maldives, so that was the largest seaplane company. Served uh, that company about four years and came back to Sri Lanka to serve. Uh, and I joined in 2000, way back in 2009, uh, for Melbourne Biscuit Company as uh, CFO. And since then, I've been holding this position as a group CFO. So Melbourne, uh, just to speak out Melbourne, we are the pioneers in in the confectionery on the biscuit manufacturing. And we have diversified into, uh, I mean, on the dairy, which is the milk powder uh, and related products, which we have the local presence. And um, quite about five years ago, we had a, that of a company in terms of the cereal based products to plantation. And we have 112 acres being cultivated on TJC mango, mango plantation. So we have, apart from that, we have associates subsidiary like Little Land, which manufacture cookies to cake products. Um, and we have Golden Bay Company, which produces wafers. So it's, a, it's a challenging, it's a lot of hard work consistency in terms of your application and, uh, and allowing the team to basically develop themselves in terms of um, in performance and giving that adequate leadership, giving that consistent push to uh, the, your team. Have uh, Melbourne has grown to a 25 billion annual revenue company. Uh, and practically we have a very strong presence in locally as well as globally. So Thank you, sir. We... Sorry, sorry to have disturbed you. So if you were going to say something else. Yeah, so uh, 
being a local company, predominantly we basically represent the confectionery segment of this uh, Sri Lankan market and as well as the global presence. And uh, we have been in predominant and we have, we have a very strong hold of uh, export markets of our products from biscuits to uh, various other cookie range products to various other products to the export, mainly to the Europe and the Middle East and various other Oceania countries. So having said that, I mean, we are very interested and very looking positive uh, how the company, the group will uh, be a grow the business in in next uh, couple of years. And we are basically expanding our capacity uh, with the market growth. And we are looking potentially looking out for uh, our market to grow in terms of uh, value added creations of products with a lot of R&D effort. And, and as you know, Melbourne being a uh, being quality, consistent company from the founder chairman to current chairman onwards. So that's it's our basically quality. Quality is being our religion of this company. So when I say religion, it has been cornerstone of our, every employees to manage, perform, and uh, and, issue, and produce a quality product to the consumer. So that we have won the hearts of the consumers uh, globally as well as locally. So that's a brief outline of my company, which I'm serving. And I'm proud to be Maliban as associate. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for that comprehensive uh, answer. And we are indeed honored uh, to have you uh, on, on our advert chats uh, with, your, with, your, with your experience and with your caliber. Um, and I think if we were to quickly jump into the real issue that, we, that, that we're trying to discuss today, uh, so let me ask you directly, uh, as as a business and also uh, as 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 a member of corporate Sri Lanka, uh, what especially post COVID, what how's the business environment? Uh, what do you think are the main challenges uh, before the economy? Okay, well, remember what you're uh, saying is on in terms of managing the COVID environment and the post COVID. How, how, as a corporate, we are handling the situation in terms of the 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 production, then and marketing. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. I um, mean, as all of you know, I mean, the, since the COVID kicked into Sri Lanka in way back in uh, January 2020, where the pand pandemic had an impact uh, since March. I mean, the country saw the uh, kind of a strict lockdown measures with the curfew have been imposed, and Melbourne. Anyway, being a food company, we have been uh, very, very, very concerned and very, very, we are very stringent in terms of our product quality and, and maintain that consistency. Uh, a saying where our founder chairman, uh, Mr. A.G. Hinampuame said, uh, give a quality product to the consumers and maintain that consistent in a manner where you have a repeat purchase which is our current present chairman also adequate advocate that you know so we maintaining food hygiene is the our, our top priority so uh, when the pandemic started way back in march last year we had a three fold uh, approaches one is the access uh, control in terms of handling the access of our employees to various other supply stakeholders in terms of access uh, validation. In, I mean, when you say access validation from people uh, bringing to the office in terms of providing transportation, providing meals to the staff, uh, we are minimizing them getting uh, getting involved with the society. So, and uh, from from the sanitization, various access measures were taken in, then managing. Managing the staff was one of the key aspects which we initiated as a corporate company, uh, where the com of course certain certain uh, employees of this company. Uh, I mean, just to give a synopsis, we, we employ about two thousand five hundred employees on a three shift production basis. Out of the two thousand five hundred, we have about uh, sixty percent outsourced employees. 
which is supplied by the outsource uh, uh, manpower supplier. Now, these people are all coming from outskirts of Colombo or their hometowns. And they have been stationed at various uh, places of their lodging to various housing, what they have been accommodating. And we were very particular in terms of screening those and providing accommodation um, and ensure that people who get sick we we had his, we had our own intermediate care centers with the approval of the health ministry. So, I mean, there was a time where the people were quarantined, quarantine centers were put up, and there was a time where the government allowed people to um, uh, where you manage your own quarantine centers, and we were very successful in terms of uh, having these employees safeguarded in a manner they we've been well looked after in terms of our own company set up centers by providing meals and various other nutrition, food and various their well-being with a company having its own medical team with uh, two doctors around the clock many uh, manning these uh, patients and we are quite successful that we have come out with this situation. So one is the access uh, controls which we put in place, then the managing the sick and quarantine people and managing the post-COVID situation uh, in terms of handling our operation in a manner where we have a very bare minimum disruption. So that's, I mean, to give a synopsis how we have done and we have been very successful and we have not closed any single day for last, uh, since uh, January 2020. Now we are end of 2021. For two years, we are not closed this company on a single day. We had some issues uh, reported. Uh, only we had to close certain production lines, but we made measures that even the staff, their well-being being looked after, their lunch, the lunch room are separated, and their locker rooms, their, their, their any other areas of their privacy being maintained and uh, ensure that production lines are separated in a manner where continued production and, and cater. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Nakia, if I, before you, before I hand it over to you, uh, if I could just uh, change gears a bit. Um, so I think if we were to lo really look at the macroeconomy, uh, and I, I do believe we've been discussing about certain macroeconomic shocks that the country is facing as we move towards, uh, move out of lockdowns. How has that affected uh, the business environment, sir? And, uh, you know, are there any specific uh, challenges that you see uh, affecting your business uh, at, at a macroeconomic level? Uh, yes, I would say, I mean, I mean on, a, on a positive note, uh, since this government came to power, I think we being on retail business, we, we are a confectionery uh, production company and also market distribution marketing. Uh, our presence is quite large in Sri Lanka. Uh, and and we have, I mean, just to mention, uh, we we have about thirty. Uh, associate, I mean, associate members or the members representing the confectionery, and we we are among the top two uh, manufacturer of biscuits to the local consumers. So since it is, uh, when you ask about the local the economic challenges, I think we had a very good, impressive start since this yeah. government came into the power. Uh, of course, there were a uh, host of benefits, uh, fiscal changes were happen on the tax policy of the government. We are, the government wanted the investors and the companies to reinvest on their technology and investment in terms of the expansion of capacity. So that gave us a real boost in terms of uh, uh, in, uh, managing the single rate of interest, single digit. I mean, you can see, I mean, most of the corporates last year enjoyed uh, well below, I would say the AWPLR was uh, well below 7%. And there was a time where the rates were falling to 5%. And then that was the key initiative where the, this company um, initiated certain automation projects and invested on capacity buildup and improved efficiency. With that, the uh, host of uh, 
fiscal change in terms of the indirect taxes system, uh, where the VAT 15% rate was brought down to 8%. And now that gave us a real boost in terms of our retain earnings. I mean, of course, there were some price reductions uh, went to the consumers also. And also your, your um, direct taxes, which has a very low regime at the moment. So even with the with that positive backdrop of uh, fiscal changes to government managing the policy rates of interest to exchange, uh, on current context, uh, there are a set of new challenges which has uh, come up. Uh, and I'll, I'll elaborate as we further go on. And I think as a, as a, as a country, as a company, I think we, need, we, we are a resilient uh, country in terms of various uh, challenges we do overcome. And, uh, and, and as a company, I would say with the challenges uh, forthcoming, I'll elaborate further as we go on. Uh, I think we need to strategize ourselves in terms of how to position ourselves and uh, manage situation. Miranga. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And, and I completely agree with the whole, with um, your statement of managing the entire situation. Um, sir, if I could just ask you a question that's been asked a lot and been in the media for, for a long time now in, in terms of inflation and how prices have seemed to be rising quite uh, rapidly over the past few months. Uh, for, for instance, the, the central bank uh, only last month had reported a 17.5% uh, food inflation increase uh, from last month to this month. And um, even if you look at the Advocata's Bakkari indicator, uh, which tracks certain retail prices of a handful of 10 uh, items, also has tracked the one of the highest uh, price uh, prices uh, since we've been tracking it. Uh, so I'm just curious, sir, if these increases and how these pr rising prices affected the industry as a whole and and the, the kind of methods that are being kind of used to handle that. Yes, uh, give a very brief outline. Now, these were the government intervention should come in. Now, when you look at uh, year 20, which is the uh, start of the pandemic in Sri Lanka, year early 2020, then moving on to the mid 20, which we, we had a bit of a hype and with, with the various lockdowns measures came in and 21, we have a mixed bag of issues we are in terms of the, as an industry, which we have been facing. Now you must understand, I mean, as Nakia mentioned, Yes, I do acknowledge uh, the your input of materials, your raw material, packaging material, all have gone up. Um, I mean, in the range of, let me say, which I'm representing the biscuit industry uh, mainly. And now you can you 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 can share them like there's areas of like your main materials like flour, sugar, and palm oil, which which contribute to the eighty percent of your input of materials in terms of your value chain. So uh, in terms of the quantity, now these prices have gone up uh, by nearly 30 to 40 percent over the last two years. So I mean, there are various reasons. So the reason I think number one is the global, uh, the global pricing is moving up. One thing is now a real example, I would say I'll share this example is the palm oil. Uh, base products like fats and oil uh, it's a it's a imperative for the biscuit industry uh, now when you these are the countries like indonesia and malaysia with the pandemic of course there were issues in terms of their production so the production there of course uh, those plantations even though they were growing in terms of their output but last two years we saw the there's volume drop in terms of the um, uh, delivery and as a result the global palm oil now for example two years back uh, uh, refined rbd which is rbd you call refined bleach and deodorized uh, palm holy was 89 cents us dollars per kilo now it has moved up to 1.8 us dollars per kilo which is almost 100 percent increase one thing is the production issues in terms of the 
their input of labor and also the global environmental issues has moved the, the global pricing up now likewise the you you have the mixed sentiments coming from the sugar uh, supplies and also the flour flour wheat wheat supplies so these were the gum it's a role of government has to play here uh, where the when the global pricing fluctuate in a manner uh, on a on a rapid space in terms of the supply cuts and various other challenges where the, as i mentioned uh, the government need to come in i mean i'm talking about the sri lanka government to stabilize the environment with the, with the fiscal uh, mechanism in place so on one hand of course we understand the government need to manage the current pandemic with in as cost and all that yes government need the indirect taxes fiscal policies to be in place collecting uh, various taxes duties to common deliveries and all that we understand but when it comes to balancing uh, in terms of the making price competitive because we need to compete with the global market now now as a company even though in sri lanka local markets we have passed down to the consumers i'm sorry to say that in three occasions we have revised our pricing in line with the input cost increases which which is in the range of 30 to 45% three price revisions have uh, gone through this industry from 2020 2021 uh, but the challenge is in the global market and now globally we need to compete with countries like india uh, far east countries in terms of our presence in africa to uh, your european market so we have not we have not changed even though you i will uh, elaborate further how how the exchange will impact in terms of our global export earnings but we the fob price we need to manage in terms of the sustainability when we are competing in markets of europe and all that and the markets like even the supermarkets like tesco any other uh, cash and carry shops in uh, europe you need to manage these uh, pricing on a consistent manner so there yeah, the issue with the present regime or the government is to manage with the fiscal benefits to the companies in terms of managing the fiscal uh, duties and structures on a very consistent manner so yes we, because the, i don't want to comment on certain areas where certain policy decisions of uh, we're importing import uh, allowing imports of sugar then suddenly banning uh, and suspending the importers to bring sugar down so these these irrela- these inconsistent um, policies will further uh, complex the situation i'm i'm not saying it's difficult but it's complex the situation but uh, as a company we need to find out ways and means to work up so with the backdrop to answer your question with the backdrop of all input materials going up in 30 to 40% now we as a government and we as a corporate citizen need to uh, elaborate how we need to create a value proposition in a manner that to sustain in the markets so with the productivity improvements uh, managing our input conversions to the best optimum uh, minimizing the waste um, then then uh, capturing certain markets which uh, virgin markets like uh, myanmar uh, even african regions so these are the host of avenues which is open uh, and uh, end of the day you need to manage your market shares and your margins so how you need to do is not simply pass the price increase to the consumers but internally you need to manage your own productivity measures and all that to harness the mitigate the price increases in your inputs so i'm sure that okay, i have answered your questions Yes, yes. Thank you so much for that, sir. Um, just a reminder uh, to the audience: uh, we are taking questions from the audience as well. So please add in anything um, into the chat box, and we will um, ask them throughout the discussion. Uh, thank you, Nakia. Uh, so I think if we were to just to revert back to the back to the conversation, uh, I think uh, you you basically expounded on 
issue of uh, prices increasing. Uh, so I think something that comes to my mind is uh, I think a lot of the papers also reported on this whole issue of uh, tariff increases on commodities like sugar, uh, margarine, yeah. which definitely are uh, essentials when it comes to uh, the conflicts of the industry, sir. Uh, so what are your comments and do you think that, uh, you know, imposing tariffs on, on, on products like that can affect uh, an industry that is, that is export competitive? Uh, and, and do you have any, uh, you know, policy uh, recommendations uh, on this front, especially to boost and help the competitiveness of, of the confectionery industry? Yeah, yeah, very much. Good question. Uh, yes, on one hand, government of Sri Lanka need revenue. Of course, we as a corporate citizen, we all of us need to understand that. So they need to meet the budgetary expenses and various capital infrastructure development. Yes. By way of fiscal policy implementation of taxes to various levies, these are the revenue collection avenues for the government. We, under, we should all need to agree. The question is, to, to answer your question, is the how consistent is. Now, let me tell you a simple and a small example. Uh, last year, or the beginning of this year. Uh, you had a sugar tariff of 50 rupees per kilo. I mean, leaving aside the controversies involved, which I don't want to comment anything, uh, 50 rupees per kilo was a custom import duty or the commodity levy, if I'm not mistaken. Now, that was brought down to 25 cents per kilo uh, to benefit the industries, which I, I fully agree that the government um, and did on a good intention. Now, when you adopt these type of measures, what is important is to have the consistent uh, policy framework. Now, if you on a particular period of time, but there again, there can be a question where, uh, in terms of the when I, when uh, Nakia raised me a question of the global pricing. Yes, we need to synchronize with the global environment pricing structure where the if there's a global issue in terms of the pricing, you need to synchronize with the local tariff structure in a, in a manner you mitigate the, uh, the the final landed price. Yeah, I do agree. But these type of measures need to be consistently followed. Whatever the circumstances be, uh, uh, now, you know, uh, let me quote this example again, this sugar matter which was 50 rupees brought down to 25 cents yes that's okay perfectly all right but then the then the commodity price need to be managed or i'm not saying that the government or any other body need to come out with the price control strategy price control is a very very negative uh, in terms of any industry so you need to allow the free market to prevail the prices under the normal demand supply I'm not saying to impose any price control. No, get out of these price controls, remove price uh, MRPs, uh, and allow the market to settle in terms of um, uh, securing the price competitiveness of your input, but handle in a consistent manner. Now, for example, come if the any government or any government of Sri Lanka wants to have a particular tariff, yes, impose that at least for a consistent for a minimum threshold of six months yeah we as an organization can plan for that and we can tell our customers look here if we need to take a, some some sort of increase or we are going to pass it this on a phase out basis and have that consistency now uh, another example i would co uh, take it up is uh, how the palm oil or palm related products been handled in sri lanka there are various uh, uh, lobby from various groups to ban this. Uh, various, some are in favor, some are in not favor. Why not? Coconut oil taken as a substitute for this. But uh, globally, the biscuit industry, we which I'm represent, may, palm oil is a stable oil, uh, which is stable oil, and with the shelf life, what we are giving to the consumer uh, is more more of oil which is the one of the primary ingredients so 
you cannot substitute. Uh, of course, you can have a hybrid model. You can't substitute with uh, uh, with coconut oil. Of course, coconut oil also there's another issue in terms of the production in Sri Lanka. So you now, when the authority says that the palm oil need to be banned, is this is that the correct position we should take? Now there was a uh, there was an instance where the palm oil where the government wants to ban. Maybe to various good reasons. Yes, I do understand. But there again, why, why we need to ban? What's the global markets are handling? I mean, you don't need to reinvent the wheel uh, all over again. Just, just simply follow what are the global markets, global manufacturers doing, and try to embrace some of the key aspects with the local R and D team. And if government wants to ban, okay, let's let's follow that. And uh, if government wants to put up a huge duty tariff and all that, yes, it's okay. But handled in a manner very consistent. But on a one aspect, they want to ban it and uh, increase the tariff, so that will deter uh, deter into the industry. Then we, as a group of people, got together and lobby with the government, and that will uh, remove the tariff again. Uh, you are going back on your policy decisions. So, to Vimanga, to answer your question, whatever the measures bring in to apply in a consistent manner is my earnest request to any policy decision makers. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for that. And I uh, completely, I think we agree with the consist that policies need to be consistent um, throughout. Uh, if they're meant to be effective. Uh, so just so we mentioned um, a lot about the palm oil ban um, and certain uh, restrictions that have been imposed throughout this COVID period. Uh, I'm curious in terms of the shortages that um, we've been hearing in this industry and in other industries uh, in relation to the bans and for the various reasons, uh, if there are these shortages in, in raw materials specifically and how that has kind of affected uh, the industry as a whole. Yeah, actually, it's a, it's a couple of four uh, on two or three folds in terms of these the shortages is uh, cropping up. But one thing is the global supplies. I mean, you know uh, very well that certain production cuts are in happening in the globally in terms of palm or crude palm oil to wheat um, and also sugar. I mean, there are various reasons for this. Uh, the, mainly, the pandemic uh, have resulted certain volume cut and also the glo global environment especially the dairy industry now for example new zealand is the biggest uh, well largest uh, dairy quarter to sri lanka uh, which fontara melbourne uh, are the main importers of milk powders to sri lanka now they have an impact of uh, the environment and as a result consequently that the pricing is going up so one one is the one is the pandemic have set in and and the output has cut down to I would say in terms of about fifteen to twenty percent. Then the environmental issues I mean those are have impacted with the global warming and uh, stuff related. And the thirdly will be on in terms of the the freight the shipping delays. Now. There again, uh, we, what we see from Sri Lankan point of view is uh, when you do ban import, uh, import I'm putting import controls and ban certain items coming into Sri Lanka. So there is an issue in terms of the freight. I mean, I'm I'm not expert to comment on this, but what I what I can see is uh, the transshipment cargo, which is either in hub in transshipment in Singapore or Dubai, there is loads of delay. So the shipping issue is also creating a, a delays in in terms of uh, uh, having uh, just in terms of supply. So, but as a, as a company, we can't um, find fault with the system or excuses. So only measures is currently with the with the, all these uh, constraints. What we do is, of course, there's a financing cost for this. It's building up our inventory, buffering our stocks to manage the, uh, to minimize the mitigate the stock out of situation. So this is one way of handling things. 
Now, for example, like ingredient suppliers, like even flavors and various other uh, supplies from globally, they have their problems internally on the pandemic. So what we, as a company, we have taken measures to uh, buffer uh, the inventory with the with the low regime of final funding cost at the moment. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, back to uh, a message to the audience. We are still open for uh, questions uh, from the audience. Uh, and of course, we've been uh, having a quite an interesting chat for the past uh, 35 minutes. So if you have any questions, uh, do send it to grass, send it uh, across to us and uh, we will we will uh, take it uh, through the rest of the conversation. Uh, going back uh, to, uh, to to our, to our distinguished uh, guest here today. Uh, so I think uh, the most commonly asked question uh, that we've received uh, when we uh, when we told the audience that we were uh, going to have a discussion on the confection industry was uh, was 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 whether the industry was in a crisis. I believe uh, there was a lot of discussion uh, over the weeks uh, saying that uh, local manufacturers were looking at relocating because of supply chain issues, uh, because of uh, rising uh, raw materials. Uh, so what's your take on this? Uh, do you think uh, the industry is in a crisis uh, or do you do you think that, of course, challenges exist, but uh, we can uh, we can uh, we have solutions before us? I would say rather, yes, to make your presence in globally, the industries or the companies need to look uh, globally. I mean, as, as all of us know, the blue ocean theory. So the the industry or we as a confectionery or biscuit industry, there's a huge market potential there globally. The, like Africa region, the, the Far East, which is emerging like markets like Bangladesh to Myanmar, now, there, these are the potential markets we need to capture. So, of course, as a, as a company, uh, being we being a very predominant local company, we need to look at global presence. So, the one way of global presence is to have your manufacturing set up. Uh, now, to answer Vimanga, with the current challenges, I mean, there are a couple of things. One is the capital, then your resources, your skilled labor, uh skill labor and your input of materials how competitive you are in terms of your pricing with the, all this conversion and how productive you are so when it comes to certain um markets to be competitive it's ideal that companies look at your resource mobility to have your uh, production facility in some other countries which i mentioned it can be uh, west african or Bangladesh, or in, in like countries like Myanmar, Virgin markets like Myanmar. So, uh, as a company, we also uh, of thinking on that lines and in to ensure that that the operations basically set up in a manner that we will have a very uh, robust uh, or consistent production facility and having managing the cost structure. So, again, there again, a uh, lot of people do compare and construct in terms of your energy, your labor, and your input cost of uh, material. So, I mean, uh, without elaborating on details of one of comparative analysis, um, uh, there are like countries where you need, it's ideal that you make your presence and uh, create now, for example, let me share something. If you, if you can, as a company to set up a facility in Thailand, we, along with the uh, synergy coming from the labor and the energy and the and the quality uh, aspects of uh, the country where the country being recognized for imports of material for various other countries like Oceania. Uh, Thailand is a good place, uh, I would say, uh, in terms of setting up a facility subject to various other duty, DD you have to do, due diligence. So uh, now, what we now we as an exporter we, we we have our global process but still we 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 are not true global most of the sri lanka companies i think except for companies like dilma and all that now we even though we have a global global marketing our global operation 
need to be precise. This is my piece of advice to most of the people who have joined this forum to make our presence and leverage in terms of their um, um, value propositions, maybe labor, maybe energy, maybe the input of your raw material. Uh, so I, I will fall short of uh, commenting bad about the current situation with the dollar crisis. It, it, it could be a temporary issue. I mean, uh, maybe another couple of months time, the government may decide to uh, come out with a different mechanism, but 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 as a, as a as a medium to long term, these com companies need to look at how you create the value and how you uh, close to the markets, how you reach the consumers. So it's a very good uh, example or the situation has created to the local companies with the pandemic, where you need to manage the the workforce, the labor cost, the energy, and uh, and the freight, the shipping. So with these challenges, it's very important that the companies need to look at making a presence elsewhere, while maintaining the consumer demand here. So, which I explained to you some of those examples. I think that will give a true global presence for your companies. Not, not, not global marketing. I mean, global marketing is something where you basically export your products and do your marketing. Yes, yes, that's a, that's a initial steps you as any company will take. But make your presence now. Uh, there are so many global examples like Coca Cola to various other electronic items. To I mean, not to mention some of those uh, brands. Uh, they have their global presence. I mean. In terms of manufacturing facility and how well you are integrated your distribution channels and to the reach of the consumer, so that that is a very key. When you are in retail business, how fast you can reach the consumers and how cost effective you are. Generally, at a rule of thumb, uh, now in Sri Lanka, you benchmark your uh, distribution and marketing, which is about ten percent of your total value chain. Uh, when you look at your value chain from your revenue after taxes, after your indirect taxes, VAT, when you create your RM, PM, raw meter packing material and, and the cost of production to your other input, uh, like advertising, marketing, distribution, your distribution cost is about 10%, 10 to 12%. So one of the key successes supply chain is the, how best you could reach to consumer and make your product available. Then we can talk over the brands, basically. So these are from a finance background. <laughs> I'm, I'm commenting to a certain market is how you're going to be eff effective and efficient in terms of your reach to the consumer. So that make you put up your facilities in, in various other countries. Thank you so much, sir, for the very detailed answer. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned, I mean, there's no, it's no surprise that this current global environment is very diversified, very, very, uh, it's expanding and a lot of the markets, like you mentioned, Coca-Cola, um, the kind of leveraging on the benefits of uh, trading and diversifying into other countries. But if I could um, kind of switch the kind of Latin conversation and ask you in terms of Sri Lanka in the national context, um, you mentioned how capital resources uh, are required for, be, for our company to be uh, competitive, how skilled labor is required, but in terms of in Sri Lanka, would you, what, what are the certain kind of policy or policy um, areas that you think need to be kind of addressed in terms of developing that sort of competitive, uh, uh, competitive drive uh, and competitive, uh, giving Sri Lankans the edge almost in, in, in to diversifying into these larger global supply chains, value chains, etc. True. Th thank you, Rakia. That's a very interesting. Now, when I uh, raise this question of capital, we all know, I mean, we as a financier, we know to, there are a couple of ways of raising your capital. It's a debt or equity. So, uh, yes, it can be a local debt or it can be a uh, foreign debt which can raise your capital and uh, in terms of 
and we have cross border mortgage or whatever being set up and you can raise your capital now the important thing is uh, as a sri lankan uh, now this may not apply well as long as you are looking at a global presence of elsewhere in the world globally but we as a sri lanka sitting in this company or this in, in country what we need is the the policy makers to ensure that country come into a, on a stable situation in terms of their uh, economic policy it can be a balance of payment or a trade deficit or your budget deficit or the gdp the growth rate whatever the the policy makers need to ensure that your sovereign ratings are being upheld and whatever the circumstances you are talking about sovereign default or any or any other negative sentiments which not the which not going to help this country so as long as you are paying your sovereign ratings have your proper uh, mechanism in place in terms of your fiscal policies with the regulated uh, your expenditure and have a very robust gdp growth i mean look at the other countries uh, of the region like bangladesh how they per capita to gdp growth so what we need, what we are not what i'm trying to say is not don't have a very ambitious target but have a proper targets of gdp growth to have a uh, have your trade balance manage in a manner so have your ratings up we are investors will have the confidence in terms of your consistent policy so as long as the investor there are various uh, growth funds in the global markets growth funds are there there are investors there are corporate entities who would like to come and invest and and these are this part of the world is the uh, is the global uh, growing markets basically. with the population growth uh, with the uh, access to the markets the global there are loads of companies load of institutions are willing to come and invest in sri lanka so as long as you may manage the government policy framework in terms of the gdp to trade deficit balance of payments and the consistent policy framework we can basically attract uh, investors coming to sri lanka and the investors are looking partnership with us let the let the like now you look at india it's it's basically it's 100% localized uh, environment so create that ambience to investors and give that confidence and then you see people coming in and investing and especially type of our company now one one lacking point of this country is uh, creating this value addition being a niche products to the consumers now we are basically i mean let me tell you we we as a company as a retail business we are basically catering to the modern i mean the medium to bottom end pyramid of the value chain so we need to look at the uh, more value proposition niche products coming to the market and get the people to consume and spend for those so now how you need to do is uh, come out with product innovation randy lot of r and d now for example now we been very successful as a company coming out with uh, because we have been very compliant with uh, the government regulation in terms of the traffic light traffic light system is where on the package you have the red red amber and green zones in it as the fat sugar and salt so we we were one of the the pioneers apart from the carbonized uh, food drink ready drink rtd market we were the pioneers in terms of taking up these uh, traffic light system introduced to the sri lanka consumer so uh, one, so one way is we are managing those protocols then uh, coming out with innovative product like sugar free health and conscious biscuits and snacking now these are the products which will create a niche market in sri lanka as well as globally so now we need to put a lot of r and d work now to r and d work to investment in uh, in the plant and machinery you need capital so you need the technology coming in so you need to bring resources here rather than rather than sending our people to all over the world we need to retain these people uh, our, our skilled people and uh, and bring the technology build the required skill set of people to 
enhance the total productivity and create these niche products. At the end of the day, you value creation. Now, for example, if you want to speak on a biscuit industry, your value addition locally is about 40%, 40-45%. So why can't we put up another 10 or 15% more? Create that retain earnings to reinvest back to in the business and uh, and create that value addition and uh, and give the youth uh, uh, I think uh, uh, kind of a platform for them to uh, uh, give their skill set to for greater productive and uh, that will create a more of uh, uh, a competitive advantage. Likewise, apparel most of the apparel companies in Sri Lanka leverage with other countries and then they have uh, differentiated. So why not we as a confectionery or as a subject came up? Had I, have I answered the Anake or your question? Yes, yes you did. Thank you so much. Okay. It was very comprehensive. Sir. Right. Uh, I think Nakia touched the the, the, the bigger picture uh, on, 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 the, on the issue of competition. If I was to look at, you know, uh, flip the coins, uh, what do you think at the micro level, at organizations, uh, how can organizations be competitive internationally? Because I think we at the Nuka Art Institute talk a lot about, uh, you know, building competition and resilience uh, in, 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 in Sri Lanka. Uh, so what's your advice uh, for organizations? Uh, especially, uh, you know, facing uh, competition from from international players, but also, uh, you know, really going out and and getting that value addition you spoke about. Uh, what's your advice? Uh, not just uh, for 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 Advocata audiences, but uh, we work a lot with MSMEs. Uh, how can organizations do that and become competitive? Yes, <clears throat> creating competition is all about creating value. Yes. So how you create value is you build your brands around that and uh, and make your presence. Now, how you create value is one thing is uh, you need to enhance your skill set of uh, people, the technology, what you impart uh, from your glo global presence and uh, constant investment on the research and development. Now, Maliban being very successful in terms of introduction of sugar-free biscuits, uh, low sugar products like even we have uh, chocolate roll, we have wafer biscuits, uh, high fiber biscuits like bran cracker. So now these are the real platform which will generate revenue for the, for the company as an industry. And these are the eating habits of the new generation. So Gen Gen, I mean, as you guys know, Gen X, Gen Y, and uh, Gen Z, I would say. So these are the new habits of consumption. So we need to cater. Now to answer Vimanga, uh, so one thing is you cannot have shortcuts in terms of your strategic planning. You need to have a very medium to long term plan in terms of strategizing your value proposition for example like melbourne uh, one thing is you need to be very consistent in terms of your production so how do you do that one thing is to have your proper capital in place uh, to in terms of securing the best of world global best of machinery in terms of your output so uh, there are markets like china india i'm not denying those uh, those supplies of machinery, there are European machines. How how you mitigate your uh, damages, how you manage your productivity. So these are the one aspect of in terms of the technology investment on your capital infrastructure. And how, how best you uh, manage your lean system of production. Again, continuous improvement of uh, enhancing the skill set of people putting in uh, training back and forth on your people, uh, constant uh, improvement in terms of your processes, uh, do a time study, uh, a method study, keep on doing those and improve your productivity measurements and uh, minimize waste, right? Whatever the Lean six, uh, six Sigma or various concepts you can come out with, but managing waste and minimizing it. So, and now managing those type of an improved productivity, well, 
sorry, excuse me, uh, is the capital investment on your plant administration. Then how you create your employee skill employees and retain them in, in employment. Now, what we see is in Sri Lanka, the more is the young, young to middle age uh, people, they are, they are on testing period. Testing period meaning, of course, with the global setup and the current situation with the economy, basically most of the people are trying to leave out of the country, we, which we have seen uh, on media. So why not we retain them in terms of giving this uh, required skill set and, and giving that hope of uh, progression in their career. So the careers can be progressed in terms of various uh, leadership programs to various team building and uh, cohesive uh, kind of quality circles. And then another important thing is uh, companies like us or any other companies or SMEs, we need to benchmark our quality standards. Now, there are various other um, uh, global standards like good manufacturing, GMP, FDA now for USA, you, if you're sending, you need to have the federal FDA approvals, then the ISO, various ISO, NQA. So you need to embrace these systems to your company. And 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 you cannot show overnight results. It has to be very consistent application of uh, systems, bringing safety systems, bringing good manufacturing procedures. And and with that technology of investment on your machinery, with the development of your people talent, with the skill development, the, uh, and all these ingredients will uh, will come out, will you will leverage your productivity, and finally to come out with a consistent products. And when you achieve these tasks, then the pricing can be your final point of success. How competitive in terms of your pricing? So when you leave it on your areas which I mentioned. Naturally, when you do your ABC costing or any other standard method of costing or activity based costing, your pricing will determine how competitive you are in, the, in terms of competing. So, in one hand, you need to do your homework and uh, come out with your strategy formulation. So, apart from the government, the dollar crisis. Uh, then the people availability. Now, another thing is, if you, if you may permit to be manga, now most of the companies are basically present in, an important thing I want, just want to share with you is present in urban. Uh, urban, of course, there are a few companies, they have their regional presence. Why not we as a corporates or companies establish ourselves manufacturing facilities uh, in outside Colombo? There was a policy framework sometime back. One of the previous government came with you shift your production facility out, outskirts of Colombo, then various host of tax incentive. I'm not saying purely do for export purpose. No, even to create a local market, why not we set up a facility in Moragala or where? Let's develop a home hotel and allow that you to join these companies with the required skill set coming. And 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 have a production facility, maybe in Moragala, maybe in Hambantut or Trikamali, and get those youths or young population working on this company. I mean, let me. I mean, without any bias to any any party, there was a government that that time they had a apparel companies being set up, government factories. I mean, that was intention of uh, of export, but why not for the local markets also? Allow the companies to move out of Colombo, out of Western region. Even though your Western region is the market which can generate about 60% of the volume, but get the youth to work on those uh, setups in outskirts of uh, Western region, where you get your employment retained. Other you will see uh, the brain drain or whatever you call it, the people living in the country or whatever. So get the employment. Yes, agree. <clears throat> sorry. Agriculture sector is uh, people are uh, more more comfortable, but there again there are risks associated with that with the seasonal factors. But there are set of youth is remaining in the, some part of the country or uh, maybe uh, you create employment, improve their skill set and get employment with regional presence. So 
maybe creating a regional hub or regional manufacturer which will cater those markets. Why not we open those things? Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I think you brought up a lot of very interesting, interesting points. Um, for in the benefit of time, sir, if we could just ask you uh, one more question. Yeah, sure. If that's okay with you. Um, so you've had a very long and illustrious career in, in different sectors uh, in, in, in the economy. Um, and as a member of corporate Sri Lanka, uh, in terms of the ease of doing business in, in, in Sri Lanka as a whole, um, what, what would your experience be in terms of uh, the ease of it? Um, do you think there are certain aspects uh, in terms of the regulations that can be improved upon? Because um, like Mamanga mentioned, a lot of the work that we also at Advocata do is in relation to medium and small business enterprises. So in terms of the ease of doing uh, business, I'm just curious if you have any personal experiences um, that you could share with us. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, let me open this uh, for me. The, your question is like this way. I think I believe I, I'm not an economist, but whatever the experience or whatever I observe, Sri Lanka is predominantly 60% uh, or 65% represents from SMEs. I don't know whether 60 or over, even touching 70%, I don't know. Maybe we are talking about the SME sector of business. Now, one of the key aspects is, uh, is is availability of capital for these people. And now, yes, there are, I mean, nobody, I, 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 I hope that nobody will, will not find fault with me. There are various financial institutions, various uh, banks are having various SME uh, facility funding schemes. Yeah, I agree. And there are a lot of uh, non-governmental organizations. They have these uh, women in management and women in power poverty helping these like Oxfam and all that companies uh, helping or organization. But when you look at the real business case for these SME, which represents 60% of our economy, I would say, uh, you need to get this capital to their, these people. Now, there are so many channels of getting. Uh, yes, the banks, the institutions have approached those. But guarantee this capital in the event of any default or any event of any where the people are struggling to repay, there should be some mechanism coming from the government or any particular authority that this particular segment we will secure you. Okay, just, I mean, uh, okay, this we will give a monitorium or, uh, or a kind of a write-off yeah, let's look after these people. Now, that kind of confidence, uh, if you guys and the team of people, the institutions can create that too. Uh, because in the day, it has to be easy access to capital and it has to be cost effective also. Now, if most of the financial institutions are going to uh, lend to these uh, people with 100% with security or collateral, that's not going to work. It has to be free capital available, and in the event of any default risk, somebody need to guarantee in terms of uh, covering up this capital, rather enforcing recovery actions. So now, they, now most of the banks they have these uh, parate execution and all that, and these are the deterrent factors for people to expand their business. So ensure that the capital which is given for productivity measurement improve their cash flows and see that those cash flows are being taken back again as a repayment of capital but in the event of any default or any other issues we are faced by the particular individual or as a segment of people secure those capital in terms of for the well-being of them not to harm or try to recover and and make the available cheaper capital so uh, having said that uh, so what I want to say is uh, develop these SME sectors. Then, then you are talking about the ease of doing business. We as a corporate, may, we see a lot of challenges in terms of in terms of uh, getting approvals in terms uh, of uh, of uh, setting up a setting up an operation. There's a various. Yes, I would do, I would agree. But if if 
a particular authority can come up with a particular one shop stock like BOI. Um, uh, now, BOI is made for investment, so but no, why not for the local expense or business? It can be a land purchase, it can be a, your energy requirement, and then the fulfilling the labor, and then the approach of the local authority. Create that one mechanism, one shop, uh, one stop shop kind of getting the approach, and whereby you ease the business. I mean, um, people to go. And I was talking about. Uh, like industries like us, we need to make our regional process. Region meaning within Sri Lanka also. So let's say I'm going to set up a facility in Moragala. I think I should be able to handle matters with the approvals on a centralized manner where all approvals, the environment to the land, to various other approvals are being approved on a kind of a centralized manner. And, and uh, make uh, your uh, operations more uh, may, may easy to uh, set up uh, and faster. Understood. Yeah. Uh, I mean, thank you very much for those uh, valuable insights. I think we've been speaking for over an hour uh, on, on a range of issues uh, that affects the confection industry uh, and also uh, on, 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 on business uh, and, and the economy as a whole. Uh, so I think to conclude uh, today's session, sir, can I invite you to just, uh, you know, uh, give us your outlook and any concluding thoughts that you would want to leave with the audience? Yes, I'm happy to talk to you, both of you guys. I mean, I mean, the, some of the comments is a very personal note and also from my company of perspective, uh, just to purely to in the interest of uh, we are presence in Sri Lanka. So we are, uh, we as a Sri Lankans, uh, we as a company, uh, what I want to say is uh, the pandemic uh, have given a good good um, um, thinking to as a corporate citizens, to as a individually, how we do our business in a new normal way. So rather than making very negative sentiments of what I want to tell your audience and you guys, uh think possible because well, sorry i i missed this point we being on retail business we grew last year 23 percent in terms of our volume and revenue top line grew by 32 percent so it's very impressive in terms of despite the pandemic so we we saw people are buying um, consumptions going up and so good thing is uh it can be a pandemic issue it can be a globe global issue in terms of the supply chain where the prices are going up. Uh, thirdly, it can be a local US dollar issue or the dollar crunch where the government is not making available the uh, required dollars to companies to thrive in terms of the imports, um, which I would say they are managing the currency, which is uh, uh, which, which, which is very deterrent factor, allow to float it and let the demand and supply prevail the market in terms of their the conversion of exchange. And and whatever these uh, challenges what we're facing, we as business leaders, we as a community have been very resilient in terms of handling. So what we need to do is maintain the focus, keep, keep the good... Uh, work in terms of your product innovation, R&D, uh, keep on focus and maintain the customer. Don't have shortcuts. Even though you lose your profitability, your margins will shrink currently. Look at in terms of investing on your capital, on the various technology or the continuous improvement. You're basically, you will see the end of the uh, tunnel. You can see the light end of the tunnel. And, and keep on hard work and focus on your main cook um, business so that will give results uh, some point of time thank you thank very you. much Vimanga and nakia thank you. thank you very much sir. thank you sir for that very positive note uh, to end today's discussion um, right. and thank you to our audience for joining us today um at Conta, we'll be hosting more live discussions just like this one uh on advert chat so please stay tuned um on all our social media pages for regular updates. 
and for content uh, like this. Have a very wonderful evening and stay safe. Thank you again, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, have a good night, please. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.